Up until yesterday, Conor McGregor vs. Floyd Mayweather was a prospect that seemed so ridiculous, I just completely avoided the subject. It wasn't that I didn't think Conor had the balls to fight one of the greatest boxers of all time, but when you consider all the contractual, headache-inducing hoops boxers have to jump through just to fight other boxers, the idea that Floyd, Conor, and the UFC would ever reach an agreement on the revenue split, it just looked impossible. By the time that type of drawn-out negotiation concluded, I expected Floyd Jr. would look a lot more like Floyd Sr. and become the first boxer in history to use a fucking Zimmer frame during the walkout for his last big payday. I felt the whole back and forth between the two was just two genius promoters recognizing the value in even proposing that fight. Floyd attaches his name to the biggest current star in combat sports, Conor furthers his mainstream appeal by attaching his name to one of the biggest athletes on the planet, they both benefit from a bunch of hype that goes nowhere and they all live happily ever after. Well, it looks like there may have been some misplaced cynicism on my behalf, because Conor McGregor has just been issued a boxing license in the state of California. My initial thoughts were, who gives a shit? This is more than likely just a negotiating strategy by McGregor to leverage his position in terms of looking for some equity in the UFC, and it may very well be just that. I'll leave a link in the description, but let me quickly run through an article posted on Bloody Elbow last May, which outlines a potentially brilliant three-step strategy that would not only allow the fight to happen, but could simultaneously cut the UFC out of one of the biggest fights of all time. It would be one of the most epic and ice-fucking-cold maneuvers we've ever seen in MMA. Now, step one is gonna sound very familiar. Step one is that Conor would obtain a boxing license. So, mission accomplished. Step two would simply involve booking a fight with Mayweather. Now, the UFC would immediately file an injunction, and that brings us to the most brilliant part of the whole fucking thing. Step three. Conor could file for relief against the UFC under the Muhammad Ali Act, which protects fighters from coercive provisions and may allow him to escape his UFC contract. Which is just fucking hilarious, because as we all know, the Ali Act has not yet been extended to MMA. But by virtue of step one, obtaining a boxing license, Connor is now a licensed boxer, and therefore falls under the Act's protection. I mean, it's just typical Connor McGregor. The guy is fucking hilarious. We've seen Connor wreck opponents with his mouth, decimate guys with his fists, but if this is his plan, then Conor McGregor, the businessman with the briefcase, may be the most formidable opponent of all. This would be murder in the fucking boardroom. Just imagine if, less than six months after WME sink four billion dollars into the UFC, the man who was headlined over 50% of the company's pay-per-views this year were to somehow untangle himself from the UFC's ironclad contract and gallop off into one of the biggest paydays of all time without the UFC. Oh, they'd be putting poor Marky Mark on Prozac because his shares in the company would hit the fucking wall. Four billion bad little investments. It kind of makes sense when you consider the hype behind his big announcement. I mean, when Dana said Connor had a big announcement that was from left field, I don't think too many MMA fans were thinking, oh my god, what if his girlfriend's pregnant, my head might explode. I mean, that is a big announcement. But that's a big announcement for his family and friends, and it has absolutely no business being thrown around at a press conference by Dana White. It's just not his place to be hyping up a fucking ultrasound. That's Connor's private business. Give the man some space. Dana White using it as a promotional tool was basically the shameless commodification of the most personal aspect of McGregor's life. I mean, the next time Dana teases a big announcement, are we going to have to start worrying that Chad Mendez is after finding a fucking lump on his balls? Because it just seems that there's nothing this guy won't try to sell and convert into cold hard cash. Anyway, this is just a quick update. Connor's taking some time off, but far from stepping out of the limelight, he's stealing even more headlines by putting his plans to make those big-time boxing dollars in action. 
Now, I don't think it's going to be quite as simple as the three steps outlined above, because I'd imagine McGregor would have to prove that the UFC were preventing him from boxing. It seems much more likely that if Conor put a gun to their head in the form of the Ali Act, that they'd more than likely jump on board and try to co-promote with Floyd, in order to avoid losing McGregor. But based on the article, the Ali Act should at least give McGregor final say over the UFC, on whether or not the fight actually happens, which is a pretty major development, especially when you consider that McGregor is prone to taking outrageous risks. The guy may be known for his mouth, but nobody could ever claim he's all talk. Connor is a born risk taker. By the way, I still think the fight is enormously unlikely, but that's just because I simply can't imagine it. I couldn't imagine McGregor holding two belts either though, so in reality, it's more about what McGregor can imagine and how he decides to play his cards. If he does decide to pursue Mayweather, then the behind the scenes negotiating the potential litigation and just the dynamic between the three combat sports giants will be fucking epic. Mayweather, McGregor and the UFC locked in a three-way tug-of-war over the revenue split, a tug-of-war where Conor actually has some leverage in terms of the Ali Act, could be amazing. Conor may be the first fighter to bend the UFC over his knee and financially spank the fuck out of him. 